Hey everyone, I'm Hummingbird. I am here with a video for you um, about Katanji Brown Jackson's natal chart and her transits. I thought this would be a fun one to add to the interesting natal charts playlist that I am planning on working on, adding to soon. I did Elon Musk a few days ago and there's a bunch of old ones there. So check it out if you're interested. Um, but yeah, let's just talk about this human being who is the first Black woman appointed, appointed to the United States Supreme Court. Um, there is actually not a birth time for Ketanji Brown Jackson. So this is a chart that is rectified by my spirit guides slash me. Um, I don't really have any strong evidence for it. Like I didn't do anything of like, you know, you can figure out a birth time or you can zero in by checking a person's like, you know, what, when they were having major transits in their life, checking what was happening to them and like putting together what houses, what planets might be in. This is like straight up intuition rectification. And I do it kind of a lot. And a lot of astrologers might judge me for that. Um, you know, I just do it for my own exploration of people when there aren't birth times, but you can decide if this resonates. So her birthday uh, is September 14th, 1970. This is a chart set for 12.50 p.m. <clears throat> if anybody is wanting to like cast their own. So for people who don't speak astrology quite as much, since we don't have her birth time, we don't know for sure that the planets are in the places that they are right now. We don't know for sure that all this stuff is at the top of the chart. We don't know for sure that her moon is at the bottom of the chart. Um, we do know for sure, like all of the, you know, the signs that the planets are in and the moon can be in a different sign sometimes depending on timing, but this moon maybe if she was, let's just actually check real quick if she was born, like super early in the morning, the moon would still have been in Pisces. Um, so, so basics of this chart. First, um, we have a Pisces moon. Uh, we have a Virgo sun and a whole lot of other Virgo. And according to this rectification, we had a Sagittarius, we have a Sagittarius rising. Um, Mercury is in Virgo, Mars is in Virgo, the South Node is in Virgo, the Sun is very close to being conjunct Pluto in Virgo, Venus is in Scorpio conjunct Jupiter, and the 11th house with this rectification. And then we also have this interesting Uranus directly opposite Chiron. And she just had her Chiron return. So I'm going to talk more about that. Transits. Um, I, to, to do one of these readings really effectively, I need to study the person's life. And I, you know, haven't really done that with anyone too much that I have done one of these readings for. But um, I did read one. There's one like pretty thorough Washington Post article that talks about the course of Katanji Brown Jackson's life. Mm. Yeah, so anyway, this is just, just some fun guesses. So Pisces, Moon, Virgo, Sun, strong Virgo presence, Sagittarius rising, um, especially if this is correct and this Moon is at the bottom of the chart, you can feel this in her. Um, you know, it's, it's something that makes her have a very like universally emotional appeal. I think it's hard. I mean, as disgusting as the Republicans were in the way that they talked to her and questioned her, like there's something, I think there's something that makes um, liberals really like her too, even though not all of her positions are quote unquote progressive, right? There's something that's very just uh, human and you can tell that she feels things deeply. And 
even though this part of herself is very private, a moon at the bottom of the chart indicates a person whose emotional nature is very private and they only even really experience it when they're alone or when they're, you know, at home in a very, very safe space, very safe environment. Um, and in her case, especially, there's not a lot of attention going to be going to this moon since it's so tucked away and since her presence at the top of the chart is so strong. Um, so let me break this down. All right, so first of all, just Virgo straight up. Um, there's a decent amount of politicians charts that I've looked at that are Virgo and Virgo does have a, a, a very innate theme of Virgo is service. Um, there's like a humility to Virgo, a desire to be putting its talents towards changing the world. There's so much less ambition with Virgo than there is with Capricorn. And I don't only mean that like, yes, external ambition, like I wanna succeed, I wanna have these material results of success or whatever, but also like Capricorn just, it's natural nature is to want, natural nature, whatever, it's natural nature is to want to accomplish things, want to like tuck things under its belt, want to be growing and building. And Virgo, it's like, let's work with what's here, and let's devote the energy to shifting, shifting systems, shifting ways that humanity is already existing. So strong Virgo presence right at the top of the chart, top of the chart has to do with your legacy and also service, really, the, what you're here to offer the world. Um, it makes a lot of sense to me. It's one of the things about this timing that makes a lot of sense to me. So you have the sun and Pluto there in the 10th house. And this is an ability to be with power, you know, despite sort of the humility of Virgo, there is a, when the sun is close to Virgo, I mean, sorry, when the sun is close to Pluto, the sun, the, the ego, the self is comfortable a lot of times with power. And so I see her, she was a very ambitious person from the time she was a kid and she was very accomplished. From the time she was a kid, she was class president. She was like successful in speech and debate in high school. She had in her like high school yearbook, it was like, her goal was to like go to law school and eventually get a judicial appointment. So she had her eye on that power. Um, and her parents were also very accomplished. Her, I, I think even her, anyway, slavery was in her ancestry cl close recently, um, but her parents were very like successful. They were both, her mother, I think was maybe a, high school principal at a like a magnet school in Miami that's what the article said and I forget I forget what her father did um but also something leadership role um yeah so there's just like kind of an attraction I feel like in her to like power um right away and then Mercury in Virgo. So this is like, you know, I'm so curious if this time is right. Um, and if it, I played around with like little variations in the time to put Mercury in the 10th house versus the ninth house, I'm not quite sure. Um, in mundane astrology, the ninth house is a lot of times actually read as the court system or the court system is read as a part of the ninth house. Um, so I like it. I like having Mercury retrograde and Virgo right aligned with the top. It also makes a lot of sense to me. Um, she, so she was recognized for 
speech for communication um, from early in, in life. Like she was successful at, at that uh, recreationally, right? In high school or whatever the term would be extracurricularly. Um, I think she did both speech and, or she did both like debate and the speech side of that, which can be like writing your own speech or can be doing like um, dramatic interpretations of things. So her voice, right, her vocal presence was right there. Um, you know, natal mercury retrograde, I'm still figuring out, but I, I find that people with natal mercury retrograde are often very good communicators. Um, and they also, have a deep desire to communicate. Um, but I'm still figuring out like how that ties into the retrograde piece. But there's something here too about humility. Anyway, it, that just having that Mercury right at the top of the chart makes a lot of sense to me. And then Mars and the South Node also in the ninth house. Um, this is just also a hard worker. Mars and Virgo is a hard worker. No wonder she was big into higher education. I um, mean, you know, like just, you know, she spent a lot of years in school, right? As one has to do to get to that level. Um, ninth house is associated with higher education. South node is there. So she's also karmically coming from a place where this territory, ninth house and Virgo, um, is very familiar. She's been there in past lives. She's been highly educated in past lives. Probably she's been a hard worker. She's been a, she's served. Um, she's probably been involved with politics, probably progressive politics um, in other lives. Her nodes are real interesting because um, as you know, if you have watched any of my Biden stuff, or if you studied Biden's astrology, his nodes are right there. His nodes are, the south node is at zero Pisces, and the north node is at zero Virgo. And so she's got her north node in Pisces, two Pisces, and her south node in Virgo. And Biden's are in the same houses too. They're also in the third and the ninth house. So that's very interesting. Um, I also played around with the time, is she a Scorpio rising versus a Sag rising? And then I like watched a video of her and I was like, oh, she's a Sag rising. Um, let me know if you agree with that. I think that also actually Biden has this too, where there's all this, he has like a lot of personal planets in Scorpio in the 12th house and then a Sagittarius rising. And it is sad rising in general. That's just a good placement for a politician or for, I mean, somebody who's trying to like appeal to the public and play a public role and be a public figure. Um, it's an energy that doesn't have problem with that. It's very extroverted. So um, yeah, I think she's definitely a Sagittarius rising. And this placement. I didn't do it on purpose, but this is actually gives her the same rising degree as Biden. And that could be off. Like, you know, even if I'm off by a few minutes, that could change, but kind of interesting, right? So Venus in Scorpio in the 11th house conjunct Jupiter. Um, I feel like this is probably a networking ability that she has. She probably met people and formed deep connections with them um, around, you know, in many areas of life over the course of her life. And she's probably been lucky with who she's met. And she's probably been more strategic than people realized um, in the way that she's done her networking. And then this is just so interesting to me, this exact opposition between Chiron and Uranus. 
And so Uranus and Libra <clears throat> also in the 10th house. And Libra, of course, is the sign of justice. It's, it's um, you know, visual images, the scales. Um, so a sign of balance. And then here we have Uranus, all about paradigm shifting and breaking out of old ways of doing things. So that's real. The 10th house, like profession, and it's exactly opposite Chiron in her fourth house. And I feel like this Chiron is probably speaking to something that's not like public fully about her childhood or her family of origin. Um, there's something that is mentioned in her Wikipedia article, which is that she had one relative that was like imprisoned on a nonviolent cocaine charge. She was like in life in prison. And she eventually got, eventually she got Obama to commute his sentence. She also like spent a lot of years in her life, like before that, like working, I think she got somebody to try to represent him, to get him out. Um, but I think it was an experience that happened when she was younger, like maybe, maybe, I don't know this for sure, but maybe the timing of that was when she was a young adult, a teenager or at the beginning of college or something. Um, that's where it, kind of the placement of this Chiron in her fourth house, kind of where I see it happening. And maybe there's something else, maybe there's something more that was a wound in her childhood, but this seems very direct because it's something that's a wound in her childhood, that's Chiron, that catalyzed her Uranus 10th house presence. So her, her you know, work in the justice system and her revolutionary work in the justice system. Um, and another piece is that she was known like her close friends in college, she went to Harvard and her close friends in at undergrad, man, I don't know where she went to everything, but I think undergrad, at least she went to Harvard. Um, and her close friends said that she was always the person that was um, trying to get, trying to bring diverse groups of people together and trying to get people to talk to each other and telling them that they needed to talk to people with different viewpoints and like find that balance. So, you know, anyway, with Chiron, there is something in childhood that with, you know, this direct opposition, there's something pretty directly that catalyzed her professional work. Um, there can be, you know, with Chiron in the fourth house, there's something in childhood usually that was a wound. Um, and, and let's go to the transits because here I go getting so excited about this stuff, but here we go. It's her Chiron return right now. Look at that. So <clears throat> Chiron coming back around to the same place in the Zodiac that it was when she was born for the first time, just over the past, like, let me check the exact dates of that. So it's her Chiron return was March of 2021 and November of 2021. And the last one was January 18th of 2022. Go Katanji Brown Jackson. Work that Chiron return. They're usually hard, but very deeply healing. And a person steps into their higher potential as a healer with the Chiron return. Um, and then just right and the sun was crossing it like right there oh my god like it's just a couple days ago that she got so the sun crossed to her chiron just like a week before she was officially appointed that's blowing my mind right now i i had looked at it before but just like seeing all of that timing that's just so amazing because it totally catalyzed this uranus 
so revolutionary. Fuck yes. Um, in her like acceptance speech, she thanked her ancestors. And here she is with Jupiter crossing her IC, which is the part of the chart that has to do with ancestors. Beautiful support expansion coming in from Jupiter there. Um, the North Node is on her Saturn. I didn't talk about her Saturn um, in the natal chart. This is another sign of a hard worker, Saturn and Taurus in the sixth house. Like she, she likes her um, routines. Um, something with the North node there, it's like there's something that she's having to shift right now, having to shift out of some, maybe, you know, Taurus gets stuck in ruts and Saturn too can kind of get stuck in ruts. And maybe with the North node, she's having to change her routine in some way. I have no idea what the life of a Supreme Court justice demands. Um, yeah, a couple years ago, Uranus was crossing opposite her Jupiter and Venus, like kind of something kind of activating the networking piece that feels relevant to her getting appointed. <sighs> yeah. All right, I think that is the end of the reading. Fascinating, I hope you enjoyed it too. And I hope that you have a beautiful day. Don't forget to hit like if you like this video, hit subscribe if you're new here. I'll see you next time.